Welcome to another video with Mr. Long and we're going to continue looking at spreadsheets in Microsoft Excel. Hopefully you've been playing around with some formulas and so now we're going to move up to how we can use built-in functions that already exist in Excel. So when you are writing a function it's very similar to a formula. You can start with an equal to sign and then you enter in the name of the function. There's a whole bunch of functions that are built in Excel and you use that function name and then you're going to put brackets at the end of the function and inside those brackets you're going to give the arguments. Now the arguments are the information that the function needs in order to produce a result. So functions will give you one answer and you will give it a set of information that it needs to work with in order to give you that one answer. Sometimes there'll be no arguments and sometimes there will be one argument or many arguments. So those are all the bits of information that the function needs in order to complete its task. And when you have many arguments, we separate them with commas so that it knows that this is the first argument and this is the second and so on. So let's take an example quickly where we look at the sum. So there's a function called sum which will add up all the arguments you give it and return one answer which is all those numbers that you gave it added up. So we're going to say there's the sum, we're going to give it its brackets and inside we're going to give the arguments. And let's pretend we want to add up the values that are in B1, B2, B3 and B4. So there I'm going to write down the different cell values and I'm going to separate them with commas. Now the sum function can take two values, it could take four, it could take a whole bunch of values. But whatever those arguments are, it's going to take the values in each of those blocks, in each of those cells and add them together and return one answer. So there's the function name, there's the brackets, and there are the arguments. Now you'll notice that B1, B2, B3, and B4 are right on top of each other. They almost form like a block inside of the spreadsheet. They're just on top of each other. So you can actually write a block of cells in a much easier way. And we call this a cell range. So we can do it like this. So we can write B1, and then we're going to put a colon, and then put the last value in the block, which is B4. And this is what we call a cell range. Now the thing to remember about a cell range is the first value in a cell range is always the top left corner. Then you have a colon and then the next value will always be the bottom right corner. So let's take this example. You see that black line? Imagine if there were numbers inside of that black line block and we wanted to add them all together. Well we could sum them but we would have to use the cell reference where the top left corner block you see there is a B2 and then we would put a colon and then the bottom right corner is a D5. So we would want to add all the values from B2 until D5. So you write B2 colon D5 and that is the cell range and that's what we would put into our sum formula to add any values that were in that black block area. So let's go try out a couple of examples. So yeah, I've got a spreadsheet of students with their names and their grades. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And yeah, we've got a nice little area for some summaries. And I've just given up me a reminder that it's the equal to with the function name and then the arguments. So over here, we're going to come over, let's click on sum. I want to add up all the values for mark one. I want to add them all together. So I'm going to say equal. So remember, we're going to click over here and type in an equal to sign, followed by the function name, open bracket. And then we're going to select all the cells. So now I can go, well, this is that one. And I press comma and that one, press comma and that one. And you see this is going to take a very long time to do. But I can refer to C3 is our top left block. And our bottom right block, it's in the same block there, is C22. So if I type in C22, you see the C3 colon C22. And you see it's made a big blue selection block around all those values. And then I can close my bracket and then I can press enter and now it will add up all those numbers. Now you could have also done it this way if I delete that I can say equal sum open bracket I can actually use my mouse to drag over all of those numbers I'm dragging it down all the way to the bottom and that way it will create the cell range for me then I close my bracket press enter and I get the exact same result and what's nice about using the cell ranges like we learned with formulas is that if I drag that across it will copy that formula now to D3 D22 so this is summing all those values so it makes my life a lot easier Another formula that you might need to know is the average, which will find the average of all the numbers. So I'm going to say equals average, open bracket, and then we select all the cells that we want. I want to find the average of all mark one, and I'm going to press enter, and then I'm going to drag that across. And there's the average for the other group of marks, mark two. So look there, so it's average, open bracket, and then the cell reference. There's a min function, which finds the smallest value for that test. 
So if we want to find it, what mark was the smallest, so equals min, open bracket, and we select that text, and then we close bracket and enter, and there we go. The smallest mark was a four, and if we look through, there, there's a small mark. There were multiple people that got four, and then the biggest mark would be max. Now, just a reminder, you don't have to write them in capitals. I can write it in small letters. It will still work, and I refer to those particular cells close brackets so max c3 to c22 and the biggest mark was a 50 and again you can move that across so that it's very easy to find the max and the min for the other test so those are the main functions that you will probably use quite a bit there are some others and so i'm going to show you these ones over here there's actually another one over there so for example mode will find the number that is occurring the most often so yeah i've got a whole bunch of grades that i've recorded their marks i want to find out which grade do i have the most marks of so which number yeah appears the most often so i'm going to say equals mode open bracket and then i'm going to select all those cells and i'm going to press close brackets so it's e3 to e22 so find the number that occurs the most often in this group of numbers and it will tell me that the 12 occurs the most often so it's one two three four five six seven so there are seven 12s and the other grades don't appear in as many times as there are grade 12s the median will find me the exact middle number if it was sorted so for example if i go equals medium open bracket with the same cell range it says that the middle number is 11. What does that mean? I'll show you what that means. I'm gonna copy these cells, these values, and I'm actually gonna come right here to the top. I'm gonna paste them just as values. So we can see the first number is there, and then the last number, if I move this out the way, is at 20. So there are 20 numbers. So if I sort this data, I'm gonna sort it from smallest to largest. If we go, if the first one's one and the last one's 20, then round about the 10, that is the middle value. So the middle value is an 11, and that is correct. And then we have RAND. RAND generates a random number. And what's nice about RAND is it doesn't need any arguments. You just say RAND, open bracket, close bracket, and enter. And it will generate a random number, which is like some decimal number. And every time you do something, it will change that number for you. So if you need a random number, that can be used. But maybe you don't want a decimal number. Maybe you would like a number between 1 and 10. Well, then you can use RAND between. So we can say equals RAND between, open bracket. And then we need two arguments for RAND between. We need the bottom value. And then we're going to have a comma because we've got another argument. And then the top value. So any value between the bottom and the top. So for example, if I put in a 1, comma 10, close bracket, and press enter, you'll notice that it generates a 10. But if I type something over here, it'll change it to a 1. And if I change it again, it changes it to 8. So it keeps generating a random number in the range of 1 to 10. So there we go. So there's the RAND between. Today... It's also a function that you just type in the function name with no arguments and it will give you today's date. And then you can say now, which will give you today's date and today's time. So you can see I'm recording this video at 28 minutes past 10 on the 22nd of the second. So you can use those formulas as well. So now that you know functions and you know formulas, you can actually combine them. So for example, over here, if we wanted to work out the average of those two numbers, you could say equals the sum, open bracket, of those two numbers, close bracket, and then we're going to divide it by two. So there we go. So we can see the average for that mark. So you can see that I used a combination of functions with formulas. You can do that. You can use multiple functions in your formula bar, whether they are used within each other or whether they're used together. So for example, if I wanted to find the difference between the biggest mark and the lowest mark, and I didn't have the min and the max, let's pretend that. So the difference in marks, let's pretend that it's equals to the max mark of C2 to C22 minus the smallest mark, which is C2 to C22. If I wanted to do that, you can use multiple functions in its own formula to work out the difference between the two marks. And that's if you didn't have those two blocks. I could have just minus those two, but pretend I didn't. So there we go. So you've got an idea of how functions work. Remember, it's always the function name after an equal to sign. And then in brackets, you have the arguments. Separate your arguments by commas, unless it's a cell range. And then you can use commas 
I actually want to show you if we wanted to add up all of these values, you could go equal to sum and the entire block of cells. If you want to add all the mark values together, that is possible. But what you could also do if they weren't next to each other, pretend they weren't next to each other, pretend there was a row in between them with some other data. And I want to find the sum of all these marks and of those marks. Well, then we can change it to equal to the sum of this range of cells. And then I'm going to press comma and say the other range of cells. So you can have multiple ranges of data. So C3 to C22, that's a range. And then comma E3 to E22, and that's another range. So you can have multiple ranges in your arguments to get those results. Another little trick that you could use is if you come over here, do you see that little funny symbol there? That's a sum. That's where we can find out information about functions. Now let's pretend I didn't know what median was. So I can come over here. So I want to redo this formula. I'm going to, I don't know what median was. I, I can come over here and if I click on that arrow, it gives me functions that have been used before quite recently, or I can go more functions and it will bring up this block where we can type in a brief description of what we want to look for. You can look at what we've used recently, or we can go to particular categories of functions. Maybe we want something to do with date or time and we want to find what, what is today. And it says that today returns the current date formatted as a date. So it can tell us exactly what it is, but I I want to go to all and I want to find median. So I'm going to, you can just type in MED, it jumps to median, it says returns the median or the number in the middle of a set of given number. It tells me what it does. And if I click OK, it actually helps me create the formula. So it's already done the median. It says, what number do you want next? What is the next number? Now I don't want to individually select the numbers. I'm going to click on that little block over there. And now I can actually select which block I want to use, but I want to select all of these blocks for the grades so I'm selecting them all and do you notice that it's done F3 to F22 for me it's done that now I click back over here and it's done and gotten those numbers for me. If there was another range, I could go and type that in there if I wanted to, but no, that's all I want. And I click OK. And now it's written the formula for me. It said equal median and it did the range. So if you stuck on a formula and you don't know what arguments it needs or the order of the arguments or what it does, then I suggest you come over here and you can try find that function. But the more functions you know, the quicker it'll be for you to do your own calculations. So there we go, that's functions. So hopefully now that you know functions, you can go have some fun with functions. For more Excel help, make sure that you go to our YouTube channel and click on that subscribe button at Mr. Long RT and Cat. Click on the playlist and you'll see all the topics available to you. We're also on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.